Different people's different things. A poor man can be greedy and loving money and comfort and ease in his world as much as a rich man who got lots of money. But the question is, where is your heart? What are you thinking about? You know, it's strange, isn't it? These American charismatic preachers are more, creating more damage to the church in India and Africa and European countries <clears throat> than anything else in the history of the church, I believe. You know why? Because these superficial pseudo-preachers, false apostles, they're telling us God's life and meaning you will experience by having lots of money, great health, lots of wonderful things in life, the best and most expensive cars, and the best of clothes. What a phony, plastic, satanic, devilish, hellish teaching. Yet Indians by millions are bringing this in and perpetuating it and they're damning their life and the church life. Take Christ's life. When he died on the cross, how much property there was to divide among how many people? He just had his shirt. When Jesus sent his disciples to speak on the behalf of heaven and the eternal God, he said, oh, by the way, don't take too many things with you. Just carry what you are wearing, nothing else. And when Paul, who was actually born and raised in an extremely rich, affluent family, when he came to Christ, he not only lost his wife, she said, you can pick Jesus or me, you can't have both. And he said, Metropolitan, where did you get that from? Well, simple fact, he was a member of the Sanhedrin, and you could be a Jewish man, member of the Sanhedrin, if he was not married. So you don't read anything more about his wife. What happened to Thomas? You and I, especially Syrian Christians, we claim our heritage to Saint Thomas. Particularly me, because I'm from Niranam. That's where Saint Thomas came and one of the places he preached. So that makes me a better Christian than you, I guess. You ever ask the question, what happened to his wife and kids? The man who wrote more about faith, Apostle Paul, you read about him in 2 Corinthians. He said, the proof of my spirituality I was hungry, I was naked, I was in shipwreck, I was abandoned, I had no one, I was lonely, and in the end, in prison, asked just about his life to be cut off. He tells Timothy, oh Timothy, please do come and don't forget to bring my blanket, I'm kind of cold. There's never instruction, oh Timothy, by the way, I just got a whole lot of property some money in the bank and, and I, have, I have some stuff, material things and by the way, this is my will, you divide all this and give it to my relatives or this and that, there's, there's nothing. So what do you think about the American pseudo-apostles now preaching to people all over the world yet living in immorality and all the wicked sins and the charismatic world embracing it and their lives have been destroyed and destroying simple people from the tribals and from the communities that do not know anything else. Now here's what I want to tell you. You can, this is an extreme statement. You can dilute it and apply it where you want to. There's no way you're going to understand the life of God here on earth without giving up comforts and ease and material